Well, hey everybody, I'm Jack, and this is Raw Tropical Living. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well out there. Are you ready for the weekend? Ha <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'm going to do this weekend, to be honest with you. Um, we had a stormy night last night, and we're actually going to be kind of cool. We're actually having, I think we're pretty much going to have perfect weather this weekend, so I'm going to definitely get outside a little bit, no matter what. Uh, I wanted to finish the week talking about a realistic raw food diet plan for you. Notice you in all caps. Uh, guys, I do videos every day, so if you are not already subscribed to the channel, I'd appreciate if you'd go down and hit that subscribe button now. Then click on the little bell and check send notifications so you'll stay subscribed to the channel. Uh, people seem to like that shirt yesterday. I got uh, comments here and uh, on... Uh, Instagram and a couple of places as well, people were asking me about what does no mud, no lotus mean, so I just thought I'd share that with you. Um, and it's like, I like what Thich Nhat Hanh has to say about it. I, I wrote it down so I'd remember it, obviously, I'm not going to remember. I like what Thich Nhat Hanh has to say about it. Without suffering, there's no happiness, so we shouldn't discriminate against the mud. But suffering is a kind of mud to help the lotus flower of happiness grow. There can be no lotus flower without the mud. Pretty cool. Um, and also, too, I'm wearing another one of the new shirts I got yesterday. Uh, you can find all my shirts uh, down below, rawtropicallivinggear.com. Um, and now the first link down there is probably still there is for that no mud, no lotus yesterday. But anyhow, so realistic raw food diet plan for you. Why did I have that you in all caps? That's because you can't, like, there's these plans out there. This is the plan for everybody. That's asinine. That's absolutely insane. We're individuals. We've all got different circumstances, just vastly different circumstances. So how could anybody think one plan fits all? I mean, I'm not even sure if you were in the same region, you could necessarily say one plan fits all because we're individuals. And that's what, that's what a lot of people don't get. Everybody's trying to follow somebody. Everybody's trying to copy somebody. Everybody's trying to do what somebody else is doing. And the way I figure it is there's no other me out there. My body, well, while it's very similar to a lot of bodies out there, um, it's different. Uh, while my circumstances are probably similar, similar to a lot of people, it's different. There's just differences, whether they're subtle or not, and that makes a difference. So there's not one plan, and, I'm, and I think a realistic raw food diet plan is something that has a little leeway in there, you know, uh, no matter how you're doing it, because when we try, what we resist persists. So when we're trying so hard to not do this and do that and blah, 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 it can be counterintuitive a lot of the times. Um, you know, there's so many different factors, like I say, that come into this. Where do you live? You know, do you live in a place where you get good food? And also kind of a part B of that is what's the climate? You know, where do you live? What's the climate? Is it cold for, a, is it really cold for a number of uh, months out of the year? And once again, don't, that in and of itself, that's not a reason you can't do a raw food diet. You know, if you choose not to, you don't. But people kind of keep going back to, well, it's cold and I need to be warm. That's a psychological thing. I mean, I might not be living in the tundra here, but we get cold. We get below freezing. And I don't feel like I need that, the food to heat my body. Um, I don't know. That just doesn't uh, factor in for me. But it does factor in for some people. Some people like, like living in the tropics. That's why I didn't, I, I'm thinking like how relatable was I when I was living in the tropics? Because I mean, unless you're in the tropics, of course you're not going to eat just like me. I got, you know, I'm not showing off my papaya that I'm so happy about because I've got one every other day, you know, pineapple, everything. So, and it was hot down there. So that was the perfect storm for a raw food diet. You know, when I lived at the beach in Costa Rica, it was hot outside um, now, conversely, even though I don't necessarily need uh, warm food, hot food to warm me up in the wintertime, I will tell you this, cooked food definitely, definitely, definitely affects me and my body temperature when it's hot. Um, so, uh, and then here's a part, here's the third part of where do you live? What do you have access to? So it's about where do you live? 
geographically? What's the climate like? It's going to depend on how you do this. What do you have access to? You know, do you have, uh, there, there's people in uh, certain climates that aren't really all that hospitable to this lifestyle, say up north here in the States, but yet uh, you might have Asian markets or you might have a Whole Foods or you might have a Whole Foods, a Trader Joe's and Asian markets that get stuff in. Um, another one that comes in, how much money do you have? How much money do you make? How much income do you have? How much money do you have to spend on your food? Because, you know, money changes everything. Money's not always a bad thing. Um, you know, you could be sitting in one of these cities where somebody else is absolutely can't do a raw food diet and you got the money, it's going to be expensive, but you can do it. You know, you can shop at Whole Foods. You can shop at those specialty markets. You can order fruit and food online, you know. So you see what I'm getting at right there. There's so many different factors out there that you have to evaluate all these and ask yourself about that. So once you've established that, like, okay, what are the logistics? What can I put my hands on? Then you have to start per factoring in your personal mentality, how you are, you know, where you're coming from, how you've been eating before um, to do this. Now, a realistic diet plan going into this I would just have to say, if you're going to be rigid, your chance, I, I, I don't like people's chances of success. I've watched this for the last close to seven years, and I, when, I, when I see somebody, very few of the rigid people seem to make it. Or when I say make it, that just sustain on a healthy version of a plant-based diet for very long. I mean, we've all seen the people uh, go rise fast and burn. And I'm not necessarily even talking about, you know, YouTube personalities and people that have brands. I've, I can think of, there's like a graveyard of people I can think of right here that I've been in groups with and forums with that whatever. And they, they come, the, a lot of times they come out of the gates and they're the star pupil at the time and they're getting people's attention and they're going from this to that and they're doing a fast and then they're doing a water fast and they're doing this, that, and that, and that. And a year later, they've spun out and you know, there's no telling they're, you know, what the hell they're doing. So I don't like these rigid plans where people are like, yep, it has to be like this. It has to be like this. It has to be like this. I've talked about this all the time. Pass, fail. You know, if I don't eat 100% raw, I, I have failed and there's no value to this whatsoever. There's so many people that leave this lifestyle simply because they can't do fully raw. And and it's like they throw the baby out with the bathwater. They had, you know, just because you didn't do fully raw, are you saying there was no benefits to the plant-based part of it, no matter how much cooked you were eating? Because like I say, let's keep going back to that. Let's eat clean, whole, plant-based foods and not worry so much about the raw versus the cooked. But it's kind of almost like reverse psychology you're playing on yourself. When you let go of this obsession of being raw, when you get let go of that mentality and just start enjoying your food and enjoying the raw food that you're eating and not worrying about what you're gonna eat next or if you ate a bite of cooked food, um, you've gotta adjust. And you know, last I would just say, and I've talked about this a good bit later, is I think uh, a realistic raw food diet plan has uh, has some some way for you to substitute cooked in there in circumstances. And I think thinking ahead is good about this. Don't just be willy nilly. I mean, you know, that's why I talk about. That's why I like for you to think about this ahead of time instead of just stand, sitting there and being stubborn and going, nope, nope, I don't eat cooked food, nope, nope. And then you end up doing whatever, and then you kind of come do some confession, come to Jesus moment with people. Oh, if I did this, I feel so bad about myself. And then everybody's got to prop you up and tell you to feel good about yourself for the next week. Just don't get into that mentality. Learn how to make good substitutions. Even if you want to be, let's say you're trying to be, and a lot of people aren't really trying. I, I'm starting to find... It's like the squeaky wheel gets the grease. We hear the fully raw because they're always, oh, I'm fully raw, I'm fully raw. What I'm finding is the vast majority of people that are even interested in the raw are not obsessed with the fully raw, which is good for me to um, see. So, you know, when you, when you need to, have that plan. What are, if you do need to eat cooked food, um, you know, whatever that looks like. If you need to eat, if you decide you can't handle it, if, even if it's psychological, okay, you're at home. What will I eat? What will I eat? 
Well, eat those sweet potatoes, eat the quinoa, eat this, eat, you know, make good decisions and think about it and have that in your mind in advance. Um, same thing, you know, you can practice scenarios in your head. What, think about, you know, if you're, and if you know you're going somewhere out in public, maybe you have to go for a family event, business, whatever, you're going to be out at an eating event in public establish what you will eat, how you can make substitutions ahead of time. I'll be honest with you, if you haven't figured that out already, I've never tried on this lifestyle. I've never put much effort into this lifestyle. I stumbled onto a lifestyle. It made sense to me. I plugged myself into it. I started eating fruits and vegetables. I started moving forward. I evolved. I learned things. Um, I never obsessed over being fully raw. I never really you know, obsessed over too much of anything. I just embraced it and enjoyed it. It's eating food, for Christ's sake. I mean, okay, you might, you know, and I understand, I understand because I'm sitting here in Alabama now and I don't have all the nice stuff that I had when I was Costa Rica, but still, I enjoy my food every day. It's, it's eating good food. How freaking hard can it be for the guy that sits around eating chocolate chip ice cream all the time? You know, boom. So anyhow, the perfect, the, the, a realistic raw food diet plan for you, for you. So stop thinking about following and do that Bruce Lee trick I'm always telling you about. If you see one thing of mine, you might be watching this video going, this guy's an absolute nut job. You might find one thing. Don't look for one person that has everything to offer you in any subject whatsoever. You know, you take a little bit from me, you take something from this guy, ooh, this makes sense, and you make it your own because you're you're an individual. Don't be a carbon don't try to be carbon copies of anybody else. So anyhow, that'll end the week. Hope you guys enjoyed this one today. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up and I'll see you tomorrow. Y'all have a good weekend. Peace.